Well, th thank you, Willie. And, and uh, uh, for those who don't know Wilson Parasuit, um, he, he's quite an amazing gentleman. And, and there's a few people in, in my, uh, my experience who, there's almost like a club of the greatest premiers that never were. And, and he would be one. Hugh McFadden over here would be another. There's um, uh, uh, an amazing uh, tradition in our province of, of quality political leadership. And the same is true across the country. Um, I, I was reflecting on it uh, just, just uh, during the day. Uh, my very last Western Premier's Conference was across the way in the Pan Pacific in, in Premier Clark's office in, uh, in May. And I was here with our, our new Premier, Brian Pallister, and he was gracious enough to listen to some of my advice and uh, hopefully um, wasn't ready to throw me out too quickly. I am retiring at the end of December, but it's somewhat unrelated. Um, <laughs> but but um, no, and, and, and I remembered also uh, my last First Minister's meeting was over at the Convention Center here uh, with the, uh, uh, the new Prime Minister and our, our former Manitoba Premier. Um, so there, this little corner of the world is, is pretty important to me. But the, the, uh, the thing that I guess I, I'd like to start by saying is um, how lucky we are with the quality of political leadership we have um, at the national level and at the provincial level. and, and I won't say too much about the local level because I don't know that much about it, but um, at the First Minister's level, uh, we are very, very fortunate. And, and I've been privy to private discussions among premiers and the Prime Minister and public ones um, over 48 plus, almost 49 years. And, and uh, I never fail to be uh, inspired and, and uh, inspired deeply by the, the quality of, of the, the people that are running this country for uh, crummy, crummy incomes and a terrible, blow, a terrible uh, po political life or personal life. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's an awful job and, and bless, them for, bless them for doing it. Um, uh, a few years ago um, in Victoria, uh, Premier Clark, hosted a, a meeting of premiers um, just after the um, end of uh, 2011, and uh, the federal government had made a number of unilateral budget cuts. And um, I was in the room with uh, a couple of other people, including Mike McDonald, who, who just uh, said hi a few minutes ago, and, and uh, a lady who's now the federal uh, deputy of fisheries and oceans, who was then the uh, um, Nova Scotia Intergovernmental Deputy and the, and the BC Intergovernmental Deputy. And we listened to a Premier's conversation of Canadian values that would have caused everybody in this room to say, whoa, <laughs> uh, are we lucky. Uh, and, and universally that's been true. And in fact, one of the, the most important examples of that would be Premier Lougheed. And, and I have a long speech here that, that uh, I won't read, uh, but, but uh, uh, I had the, the huge privilege. Um, and by the way, the way you survive in, in the public service uh, over as long as I have is you don't sit in row one. You sit in row two or row three or row four, and you keep your head down and, and, and do, do the best you can. And, and uh, if you're lucky, you don't get your head blown off. Um, but but um, <laughs> so I'm getting out while I can. But but um, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> the uh, uh, Premier Lougheed was was an amazing an amazing statesman and an amazing gentleman and and uh, um, and and, and, and uh, Willie as as we call him and Mark Ellison and and several others were um, my bosses in 1973 when the Western Premiers started to get together. Uh, and it wasn't a clear slam dunk that it was going to happen. Um, if, if those of you who may remember some history, you'll know that in 1973, the Western provinces had three NDP Premiers and one Conservative Premier. And, and uh, it, was, it was up to Premier Lahey to decide if he was going to be uh, an ally of, of these others or if he wasn't. And, and bless his heart. He, uh, he saw the advantage of it and, of course, probably assessed his own 
personal capabilities and knew that he was going to do pretty well in the in the group, and and he sure as heck did. And and um, uh, I remember being in the room when it wasn't clear he was actually going to be uh, a member of the team, and and uh, remembered um, I. Possibly Willie and Mark uh, escorted him in, or Ed Schreier did, and um, the huge sense of relief that he had come aboard to be a, a participant in the Western Premiers group, and, and uh, uh, what a formidable team it, it, it turned out to be, and what a formidable uh, member of the team uh, it, it, he turned out to be, and, and what they accomplished. Um, while they weren't successful in, in uh, uh, persuading the Prime Minister to have uh, more than one Western Economic Opportunities Conference, they did start a process that's led to Western Premiers continuing to meet to this day. Uh, and, and now there's a new, uh, a new team, which is um, four out of the seven Western Premiers uh, in the New West Partnership. And in Manitoba just now, just last week, uh, joined to complete that that group, and so it's almost like um, the same team wearing two different sets of uh, uniforms, but doing the same the same good work. And I I, uh, I, I said to, um, uh, to to Joe Lahid earlier tonight that I was going to talk a bit about his dad, and I I was so pleased to have have uh, been given one of our one of our staff and one of my my colleagues. Um, I'm not sure where he's sitting. Elliot Brown, who's our new uh, Manitoba ADM of International Relations, which itself is a, a pretty good accomplishment, uh, will know that somebody in our office found this, this wonderful document, which was a handwritten note that uh, Premier Law he'd sent to our Premier, Premier Schreier, during the Western Economic Opportunities Conference. And they had been saying to the Prime Minister, please, sir, uh, we really want to cooperate with you. We've been working together. We've got a million good ideas. Please listen to us. We're genuine. We're not here to blow you out of the water. And he writes, and this, this was just something he had scrawled at the table, to Mr. Schreier, Ed, I am going to uh, mention the value of our four provinces working together. Perhaps it might be useful if you referred to it as well, to, to, to underline it. And then he says, okay, <laughs> and signed Peter L. And I thought, what a cool thing. So I, I've got this for you, uh, young man. And, and, and um, on the other side is the Vancouver story in the first ever Western Premiers Conference, which was held, Vancouver Sun story, first ever Western Premiers Conference. Um, so that's part of the story of Premier Lloyd, and I, I guess um, what I what I want to say is um, how much this uh, recognition, this honor, means to me. And it's it's not only because of the people who've received it before, uh, and and some of them are very good friends of mine, and and a number of them I've worked closely with over the years, and they're high high quality individuals, including. Um, my fellow honorees tonight, uh, but but also because the uh, the award is is um, named after Premier Lawheed, and I I saw him because of my job on many 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 occasions um, in in conferences in principally in Ottawa, but not only um, but right across the country. Many of them were were televised, and so there's there's verbatim transcripts for anybody who's. Um, is so inclined to, to listen, and I think you would be, um, again, very, very impressed with the, the views and the, the, um, the vision of Canada as expressed by the, Premier of Al the then Premier of Alberta and by, by the other Premiers around the table. And, and he was quite a, quite a gentleman. He, uh, in my case, um, I remember being at the table once and we were doing a presentation on um, health financing, actually quite quite a relevant uh, topic, and it hasn't changed since then. And I was, I was uh, talking about a, a particular approach. Um, as it turned out, it wasn't that great an approach, but uh, <laughs> we didn't know it at the time. And, and um, uh, some of the others were, were uh, talking, and he said, well, we should listen to what this young fellow has to say. And, and uh, I, I felt, whoa, this is... Uh, Pretty nice guy, and 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 remembered always um, uh, that moment. Um, I I guess there's so many things that stand out in my mind. Um, 
the main ones being his, his vision of Canada, his uh, willingness at a time when Alberta was uh, becoming so important in the Canadian uh, economy that he, he was um, fully prepared to um, ensure that Alberta's uh, well-being was also uh, an important part of Canada's well-being. And I remember there, there was a, a great story of how um, he was flying back from Ottawa one, one time and he was flying over Manitoba, kind of looking down and saying, we must do something for, uh, for Manitoba and the other provinces that aren't doing quite as well as we are. And uh, again, bless his heart, He'd, he uh, said we should, we should uh, start using some of that Heritage Fund money and loaning it to the, uh, to the other provinces. And, and uh, uh, he did. And, and, um, and most of the provinces took him up on it. Uh, the only problem was that the, the interest rate that Alberta was charging was slightly above what we could get in the open market. <laughs> so <laughs> so we, uh, they, had, they had some pretty good civil servants there. So, but we, we all did it as a, as a gesture of, uh, of unity and, and I don't think ever, ever regretted it. But uh, what, a, what, a, what a fine gentleman he was and, and a family man. And, and uh, as I, I was saying earlier to, uh, to Joe, I, I well remember um, Friday nights, uh, he'd be flying back from Ottawa and we'd all be on the same plane and, and I would get to Winnipeg and uh, there weren't that many direct flights to Edmonton in those days. Uh, and, and he would get off because his, his daughter, Andrea, was enrolled at the Royal Winnipeg Ballet School and, and he would spend a couple of days, maybe the weekend, visiting with his, with his young daughter. And, and uh, um, my, my understanding from a person that I know and that Bonnie knows, uh, who now runs the Royal Winnipeg Ballet School, was that she was a darn fine dancer. But uh, her dad was there for her, and, and I thought, well, this is, this is uh, pretty nice. And his other, um, uh, I, I guess, uh, uh, feeling about the importance of family was that he encouraged at annual premier's meetings uh, that, that the other premiers and officials uh, bring, their, bring their families so they get to know each other, and it would contribute to the bond among the premiers as well as... Uh, 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 just a whole uh, understanding of, of the way Canada operates. And um, amazing consequences, like a couple of years ago um, when um, Robert Giz was the premier of uh, PEI, uh, he said to me how he recalled having been in Winnipeg for a, an annual premier's meeting in 1990 and what a great time he had had. And his... his uh, goal in, in uh, 2014 when he had the, uh, the PEI Premier's Conference was to replicate the one in Winnipeg and, and he certainly did. And unfortunately, uh, he soon stepped down as, as Premier, but I don't think it was related to the fact that it was a great conference. I think it was related to something else. I, I, I do want to say, I guess, um, a couple of things. I, I, I had, a, again, a lot more than I'm going to say now, but uh, I only saw Premier Law, he'd get agitated twice, I think, in, in my memory. Uh, maybe once during the constitutional process, but um, before, before that, before, he was a very cool guy under pressure. I mean, it was, I, I, I don't know what he was like at home, but he was amongst, amongst the, uh, the, uh, the government people, he was, uh, he was as cool as you could get. And, and um, there, there were two times that he was not totally unperturbed or unflappable. Um, one was when we were on a DC-9 coming out of Ottawa and we blew an engine over uh, North Bay and Willie was on the same, the same plane and also Sheila Dow who was our senior economist age 23 from Scotland. And, and um, so in those days DC-9s had two engines so one was gone. And, and it, we had this laborious 45 minute uh, slow descent into the Toronto airport where all the fire trucks were lined up along the runway. And so I saw him like, slightly perturbed at that point. And the only other time uh, that he was perturbed, and this is kind of a funny one, um, and, and you have to be a Manitoba government worker to understand this one, but he had, he had um, arranged to chair a Western Premier's meeting um, I guess it was in Edmonton, and, and uh, Premier Schreier couldn't attend the first day, so he sent a minister 
who was perhaps the most ornery member of our, of our cabinet, who didn't believe in provincial ownership of resources. And, <laughs> and I guess he uh, caused quite a, uh, a bit of consternation in, in, uh, in the conference. And so um, uh, Premier Schreier received this phone call from Premier Lougheed uh, partway during the conference saying, uh, <clears throat> Uh, Ed, would you please uh, would you please come to the meeting as soon as possible? He said, "I'll send a plane for you if you can if you can get here." And 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 sure enough, uh, that that's what happened. But no, I mean, I, I and actually, um, one more story, which is um, I, I know to be true uh, from 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 good uh, good sources. Uh, we've talked about the importance of policy uh, and 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 what a difference it makes and. How good quality policy and, and innovative policy is 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 hugely uh, important in our system. Um, the uh, the Premier of Alberta set up the Department of Federal Inter and Intergovernmental Affairs, FIGA. Um, he was the the first Western Premier to have such a such a department. And in the first year, uh, FIGA's mandate was to just kind of get us out there and get us known. And so they had they had guys who were uh, uh, I should be careful, but I mean, essentially, they were party animals, and, and we used to uh, have great times with these guys. And, and uh, Alberta definitely became known. And, and um, <laughs> but then uh, I think I think uh, Premier Lai's uh, real original goal uh, was to have a high quality central policy unit. Uh, but he wasn't going to be able to set up something called the, the central central policy unit, or because that would have been inconsistent with um, the political mores of his home province. So he called it federal and intergovernmental affairs, but he hired uh, the best policy people he could possibly get. And, and many of you will know Peter Mikasin, and you'll know Arisi Eleni, and who was recently uh, uh, a recipient of the uh, Peter Lougheed Award herself. And then Jim Dinning came along and a whole bunch of others. And, and uh, uh, so he did, in a, in a very, very astute way, uh, get a great central policy unit in the uh, government of Alberta, which uh, um, he, he described in, in a slightly different way for his, his own very effective reasons. Um, he was a wonderful gentleman. He was a nation builder. He was a statesman. I had a, 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 an amazing um, experience of having a chance to introduce my son to him and reintroduce Bonnie, my partner. Uh, Bonnie had, had met him when she worked in Premier Philman's office for many years and they were, they were good friends. And, and uh, uh, my son was a lawyer in Calgary and had, had known about Premier Lougheed's legacy, which was everywhere in Alberta, but he'd never had a chance to meet him. And, and we were at a tribute dinner for um, Roger Gibbons, who was also a recipient of this award. And, and uh, Jim Dinning, who was also a recipient of this award, um, uh, introduced Premier Lougheed to my son. And that was a, a great moment for me. And then I, I'm, I'm sad to say, but, but um, I feel good about saying that on the, the day that um, Premier Lougheed passed, um, there was a Canada West Foundation board meeting on, and, and I was with Jim Dinning, and I was with Arisio Lenny, and I had a chance to um, chance to uh, help write the statement that Canada West uh, issued on him, and on what a, an amazing Canadian, an amazing Albertan, an amazing statesman he was, and and. Um, it was uh, a wonderful feeling for all of us because he was a hero for all of us and right across Western Canada, right across Canada. So that's why this award is so important to me um, and, and, I, and I thank you for it. And uh, um, that's all I got to say except that uh, we are very, oh, sorry, I'll add a few. Uh, <laughs> one more thing I wanted to say. Premier Lougheed was hugely important in opening the door for provinces in international relations, and, and uh, Willie alluded to this, um, in the U.S. and in Asia in particular. Um, and and um, I, I remember many examples, but 
I think one of the more famous ones was in 1985 when the National Governors Association assembled a group of their guys with, with the group of the Canadian Premiers, including Premier Lougheed, and it wouldn't have happened without him, in Boise, Idaho. And there are transcripts out there where you can, you can see Bill Clinton, who was the governor of Arkansas then and the head of the National Governors Association um, group, talking uh, free trade with Canada and, and both sides recognize the, recognizing the huge importance of it. And subsequently, um, uh, the Canadian premiers have played a huge part in, in strengthening the relationship between Canada and the U.S. And I think um, in, the, in the months to come uh, are going to have to be relied upon uh, even more uh, because my, my guess is that the relationship between the two national governments isn't going to be all that um, positive, at least at first. And, and uh, where the positive uh, relationships will be, will be at the provincial state level, where um, premiers and, and governors who appreciate the importance of the, uh, of the trade relationship and so on will... Um, will be the ones who are, are doing the advocacy work on, on behalf of North America. And, and so, anyway, I wanted to add that, and that's the, uh, the, end, of my, uh, the end of my intervention here. And I, I, I thank Ed, and I thank the uh, Public Policy Forum so much. <laughs>